My name is Christina Feldman. I was one of that generation who traveled to India in the late 1960s, early 70s, in search of, I'm not quite sure what, but in search of something other than what I knew. I practiced for a number of years in the Tibetan tradition in Dharamsala, uh, the home of the Dalai Lama, and learned a great deal. I also then practiced much more in uh, the Theravadan tradition, uh, focusing much more, I think, upon some of the meditative development and pathways available at that time. I returned to the West in the mid-1970s, um, part of that first generation, I think, of teachers who began to teach insight meditation in the West. And without any conscious motivation to be a teacher, I found myself in this position of teaching, something which I love and have a passion for. When I look back over my life, I, I see the many seasons I've gone through on this path from you know, times of a very in-depth formal meditation, retreats and study, teaching periods. I have been a guiding teacher at the Insight Meditation Society uh, from its very early years. I've been a co-founder of Gaia House and also a co-founder of Bodhi College which in some ways reflects my passions of the moment, which are to, to deeply integrate both the, the formal dimensions of practice and a deep understanding of the early teachings. I have always been deeply inspired in reading the early texts that this possibility of awakening is so central in every teaching that the path has a direction, the path has a fruition, deeply committed to students, practitioners, discovering the same insights and the same freedoms that the Buddha discovered. Of course, there will be many debates and many discussions about what awakening looks like, but I would invite you just to come to your own life. Do you know the difference between being unconscious and being awake? Do you discern the difference between being lost in confusion and being clear and responsive? The great genius of the Buddha was to always build upon what we have already tasted and already experienced. And all of us have had moments in our lives, sometimes quite unexpected moments, of a profound sense of wakefulness, being present, being touched, being wholehearted, being collected, being equanimous, being joyful. This is what we're learning to develop. This is what we're learning to build upon. This is what we're learning to bring to fruition. The Buddha very much taught that the bringing of those seeds of potentiality to maturity, that this is a path to the end of struggle. This is a path to the end of distress. It's about what we're waking up from and what we're waking up to. We are waking up from that world of confinement and contractedness and despair and doubt and distress. This is the world we're waking up from through understanding and through cultivating these qualities. What are we waking up to? We're waking up to understanding what it means to to be an embodied human being, a person who lives in the light of the understandings of change and uncertainty and non-self, who knows how to, to apply and to live those understandings in every moment. We're waking up from a world of clinging and grasping and all the contractedness it brings to a world of spaciousness, of being unbound. We're waking up to a way of being where our hearts can flourish, where we can care, where there is compassion, where there is empathy and sensitivity, where there is courage and fearlessness. We're waking up to a, a way of being where we can be a participant in the healing of our world, of being an engaged human being. 
there is always a danger, I feel, for people in, in thinking or believing that awakening is impossible for them, that it, it, it's something that belonged in the past or something that's only available to people who seclude themselves in monasteries and, you know, disengage from the world. It's always a danger of romanticizing awakening as if, again, it's, it's a distant goal on a distant horizon. This is not, in my understanding, how the Buddha spoke about awakening, how the Buddha spoke about liberation and freedom. The Buddha speaks of this as something that is very here and now, something to be seen, the Dharma to be seen, the understandings to be seen and to be understood here and now. We don't, any of us, begin with an unshakable deliverance of heart. We often begin in very shaky ways. And yet we begin to taste the lovely, the loveliness of these qualities of awakening. And in tasting that loveliness, we no longer willing to engage so much with the unlovely, lose interest in being unconscious or unaware. It is important that we bring the imminence of waking up into our lives as they are, not waiting for a world of perfect conditions or ideal conditions, but realizing this life we have now, with all of its difficulties, all of its joys, this is the classroom of our awakening. This is where the classroom of cultivating and developing and bringing to fruition these qualities, which are perhaps the characteristics of the greatest depths of maturity, emotional, psychological maturity that a human being is capable of.